Hello everyone and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is breaking news, it has been confirmed and I'm saying confirmed because it's in People Magazine and they are so tried and true when it's in People Magazine, you can pretty much bet that it is true that Monica Garcia has been fired from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. They heard us. We have been answered. I am here for it. So we're going to get into what the article says on People Magazine. Then we can talk about maybe why this is happening and why they are announcing it now. And then I also want to talk a little bit about Monica and her four last names and her ex, Mike, being arrested. Maybe that's even a part of her being fired. Who the hell knows? But before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's go. So this is according to People Magazine. So if I'm looking up over here, it's because I'm referencing the, the article. I haven't gone live with my face in a while, so... I'm looking this way. Sorry. So as you guys come in, be sure to say hi, drop your name. Where are you listening from? And your thoughts. Are you excited about this news? Are you not excited about this news? I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. Okay. So here we go. Monica Garcia departs the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after breakout debut season. Exclusive. Exclusive for People Magazine. The season four standout has been praised by critics and fans alike for making the Bravo series fourth season unmissable television. I mean, if you like watching a train wreck like a lot of people do, I guess. Monica Garcia will not be returning to the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City for its upcoming fifth season, multiple sources tell people. Remember, if it's in People magazine, I feel like it's pretty legit, and I'm guessing those sources are people close to production. Despite a breakout debut on season four of the Bravo series, the sassy standout, I wouldn't call her sassy, I'd call her psychotic, but that's just me, who is 40 years old, will not be joining co-stars Heather Gay, Meredith Marks, Lisa Barlow, Whitney Rose, and Angie Kay when cameras pick back up next month, according to insiders. So... There is a little bit of tea in there, you guys. So now we know that Heather's coming back, Meredith, Lisa, Whitney, and Angie Kay. So we know that the rest of the entire cast is coming back, allegedly, according to this article, for the upcoming season. Now, what does this mean? Will Mary Cosby be back, friend of or full-time? And also, they have to add in more housewives. You know, we can't have this season with just the one, two, three, four, five of them five or six of them, whatever it is, we need more housewives on Salt Lake City. I think that has been the biggest thing where it's really just been Heather and Meredith and Lisa and Whitney. Angie K has been there. Sure. You know, um, but I think with Jen Shaw gone, we need not even Monica, like who cares about Monica, but I feel like we need at least two to three solid new housewives to join the show. And I don't need the housewives to be friends with Heather and Meredith and Lisa and Whitney, but I think it would be really interesting in case production you're listening. I think what actually would be really interesting is if the two to three new housewives are they themselves friends. So it's not so much like we have to make sure that they're friends with people on the cast because that's kind of how Monica got in because she was Jen Shaw's assistant. So that was her way in. So I don't think that we necessarily means that the new girls have to have a history with the girls who are already on the show. But I think if the new girls came in and they had their own history, I think it would be interesting to see how those groups of friendships then came together to gel. So production, that is some free pitching, if you will. If you want more pitching, holler at your girl. I will invoice you next time. Okay. People reached out to Garcia for comment and to Bravo TV, which typically does not comment on casting. Well, typically they don't comment on casting, but they did in The Hollywood Reporter. We we did a deep dive where The Hollywood Reporter sat down and talked to the showrunners and the producers of the show. Go back and watch that. I read the entire article for you guys and I broke it down. So there's that. Garcia, a mother of four and the first Latina to join the cast, has been widely praised by critics and fans alike for breathing new life into the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Bravo superfan Jennifer Lawrence noted at the Globe and Globe 
the Golden Globes Awards earlier this month that the women gave Oscar-worthy performances. And just on Tuesday, the Los Angeles Times published a story praising Garcia for turning the reality series into unhinged, unmissable TV. Again, I'm so confused. I don't understand how the very intelligent journalists, writers, editors at the Los Angeles Times is praising this woman. Like, stop. Don't you don't you have other things to talk about Los Angeles Times? But anyway, I like that's what I don't get. And I even seen people online being like they want Jen Shaw back and she's got, you know, to the feds and she did fraud and she's in blah, blah, and she's in prison. What people, not our people, not us candy canes because like we get it, right? We get it. But what other people Monica stands are failing to see is that Jen Shaw's fraud is not the same as Monica's fraud. I made the analogy before. It's basically like the Jen Shaw's, the Teresa Dudice's, the Erica Jane's. Those are the people that are bank robbers. They've gone out and they've robbed a bank. And that's bad and that's wrong. Of course. Monica Garcia is the person who came into your home and robbed you. That's the difference. The fraud that Monica did was directly against Heather and Jen and Lisa and Meredith and Whitney and Angie. She, her fraud was against them. And she, like she said, she specifically sought them out, infiltrated these people. These are apples to oranges. And I, I think that Bravo, NBC, Shed Media, I think they made the right choice in firing this woman. They really did. Because if you break it down, if I say I work at Target, say I work at Target, right? And I go to my manager and I say, listen, manager, I've had this ex-boyfriend. He has been stalking me. He does drive-bys of my home. He broke into my security footage to steal videos of me and my house, my private security videos, he broke into it. He lied to me about who he was. He's been taking videos and photos of me. And then he also created this account on Instagram where he just, you know, um, he doxes me and he puts out my personal videos and my private videos and photos and information about me on this account on Instagram. He's asking our mutual friends, you know, where am I staying? What my address is? All of this stuff. And now he's gotten a job here at Target just so he can, you know, keep tabs on me and be around me. I'm pretty sure the manager at Target would fire that would fire the person that they just hired. Because now that makes Target liable. If I go to Target and say, listen, this person has been stalking me. This person has been posting private things about me online. This person has infiltrated my family, my home, my job just to be a part of my circle and my world. And I don't want this. I'm pretty sure the people at Target would be like, yeah, we need to fire this person because that's a stalker. And now they're also liable because if something happens where this person that Target hired, which they know stalked me and did all this stuff, does something to me, now Target's on the line. Obviously, Target would be NBC Bravo. Obviously, the stalker would be Monica. And obviously, me would be Heather, Angie, Whitney, Lisa. You know, it's a bigger than it's it's a big deal because if you take everything Monica did, it's pretty crazy and psycho. Okay. News of Garcia's exit comes hours before the airing of the third and final part of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City reunion, in which she is expected to confront the revelation that she's behind Reality Bond Tees, an Instagram troll account that had a history of posting negative things about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City stars. Garcia owned up to posting on the account when Gay exposed her during the dramatic season four finale in Bermuda, but claimed that she was only one of multiple people who ran the Finsta. One of the others, according to Garcia, was Gay's hairdresser, Tanisha, an allegation Tanisha has appeared to confirm online by posting multiple screen grabs from private messages sent from the account. Well, People Magazine, yes and no. Tanisha said she knew about the account. She did not say she ran the account. And that's a very um, important distinction. People Magazine, you're slipping. Tanisha never said she ran the account. She said she knew of the account, and that is the and that and that is actually the their whole point of contention. So you got to do better, People Magazine. 
Monica Garcia was saying, oh, it wasn't me who started it. It was Tanisha. It was Tanisha. It was Tanisha. Blah, 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 blah. Tanisha was like, no, no, boo, boo. I am admitting that I knew about the account. I kikied about it. You know, I talked about it with you. You know, I knew you were posting. I knew what the account was. But Tanisha came out and clearly said she never posted on the account. She never created content for the account and she never ran the account. That's a very um, important distinction. So People Magazine, you got to fact check yourself because she did not confirm that she ran the account. And I think that's a very important distinction. I actually think it would matter with Monica. If Monica just knew about the account, it would be less weird and psycho and crazy versus she ran the account. She created content for the account. She got video. She got tea. And she was actually actively posting on the account. Those are two separate things. Two separate things. Additionally, Garcia has also insisted she only participated in Reality Von Tees to expose former friend and Real Housewives of Salt Lake City alum Jen Shaw, who is currently serving a five-year prison sentence for her role in a long-running telemarketing scheme. I didn't say S about anybody else. I didn't say crap about anybody else other than Jen, and I will own that to the grave, she shouted at the women, adding she didn't see Reality Von Tees as a bad thing, and it was just telling the truth. Well, no, you're not telling the truth. You were a gossip account, you you know, and that's fine. You just say just say what you were. And as we all know, her whole high moral ground of I only did it to expose Jen, who is this horrible person, has been debunked by her herself. You know, we saw part one of the reunion when Heather played the audio of Monica herself saying the only reason why I was Jen Shaw's assistant was because she wanted to be on the show. That's when she referenced herself to be like Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian was an effing assistant, blah, 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 blah. I'll see if I still have the video and we can watch it. If I still have it saved, we'll watch it. But she says it herself. So this is clearly debunked. You know, she wasn't exposing Jen Shaw out the kindness of her heart. She was exposing Jen Shaw because she wanted ammunition to get on the show. And she has a very sick, pathological envy for all of these women. That's why she has such hatred and vitriol towards them because she envies them. She wants to be them. She didn't want to expose Jen. She wanted to become Jen. Those are two very, very different things. And she said it herself. She only did it to get on the show. She infiltrated her to get on the show. Not because she wanted to like save the elderly. Girl, bye. If you want to save the elderly, start with your mother. <laughs> respect your elder. Respect your mother. You respect, because that's another thing, right? We've seen how Monica talks to her mother. She talks to her like a chick on the street, worse than a chick on the street. She yells at her. She cusses at her. She lies on her. She disrespects her. She kicks her out of places. She leaves her places. I just don't buy that someone who treats their mother like that all of a sudden has this moral compass that she can't believe Jen Shaw would have the audacity to yell at an assistant, the audacity to yell at her fashion designer. Girl, bye. Bye. You don't, people don't treat their mothers like that and then actually care about how other people treat other people. Like, start with yourself. Still, the sting of, Gar of Garcia's lies was hard for Heather to overcome. She called out Garcia for being a cyber bully internet troll and confirmed she had a collection of receipts, proof, timeline, and screenshots to prove her claims. The phrase became an instant meme among fans and was even quoted by the U.S. US Representative Robert Garcia during a House Oversight Committee hearing this month. Kind of scary, but okay. Heather's co-stars agreed with her outrage. You effing deceived us all, Barlow shouted, while Meredith Marks yelled, you've sat here with us for three months and you've not told us the truth. In the previous two installments of the reunion, Garcia has been on the defense while questions about her past have surfaced. Her co-stars have essentially written her off as a fan who infiltrated their friend group. Again, they use the word infiltrated. We used it here with the candy canes first. We were always saying Monica infiltrated, infiltrated, infiltrated. This is now the second or third time 
that Monica herself or People Magazine or some other publication have now used the word infiltrated. We have said that for so long. I know you guys are watching production, so keep watching. Um, anyway, their friend group, the sh you know, i.e. the show, and pretended to be their ally while secretly take while secretly talking about them behind their backs. That very behavior and Garcia's overall unapologetic messiness is precisely what viewers have embraced about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City newcomer. Well, some viewers, not all, not me. But it's also what ultimately put her fate on the show in jeopardy. I think the question is how will Monica or will Monica find her way back into this group, reunion host and Bravo exec Andy Cohen teased to entertainment tonight on Monday. Mm -mm -mm. These Those discussions, according to producers Noah Sampton, who's the senior vice president of production at NBC Universal Television and Streaming, and Lisa Shannon, senior vice president of programming and development at Shed Media. So these are very important people. So Lisa Shannon, Shed Media is the actual boots on the ground production people. Th these are the people who are actually casting the show. These are the people who are scouting locations for the show. These are the people who are working with them on their storylines and their narratives. These are the boots on the gown production people. Noah Sampton at NBC Universal is a high level executive. He probably doesn't even know who these people are in real life. He's too busy, you know, in the office doing his little office stuff. He's not boots on the ground. We've had um, we've had all about seventeen thousand conversations about that subject. We probably have another few hundred ahead of ahead of us as well. Noah told the Hollywood Reporter on January nineteenth, noting that showrunner Lori Gordon was involved in the conversation as well. Monica's a great cast member. She's open and vulnerable, and she represents a different kind of person in Salt Lake than we have on the show. She comes from a different background, and there's a lot about her that the audience can relate to in a way that's different from the other women. But at the same time, there is the deception. There's the relationship with the other cast members. It's a really complicated puzzle. A puzzle, he continued. From a rating standpoint, you would want to find a way for her to come back, but it's really challenging in this situation. We're just trying to figure it out. Okay. This is what I think happened. I think that maybe production wanted her back for, quote, ratings. But I think that the women, the other cast women, like, um, let's see what you guys are saying in the, in the chat box. Like the other women, like the, um, like the Heather Gay and Lisa and um, who else is on the show? And Whitney. I think they all banded together. And we're like, we're not filming if she comes back. I think they pulled a friends where it's like, unless we all get $1 million an episode, none of us is coming back. I think the women banded together and said, we are all, you can do a show with Monica and find new women, but we're not going to come back and film with her. And the reason why I think that is because like I said before, it's different if a robber goes and robs a bank. It's different when the robber comes and robs your house. And I think that's how the women felt, that Monica came and robbed their houses and they did not feel comfortable with it. And at the end of the day, we look at this as a television show, but at the end of the day, this is a workplace, corporate environment. What they do may be creative, but it's a workplace, corporate environment. And if you go to your boss and you say, I do not feel safe working with this person because of A, B, C, and D, and you have the receipts and the proof and the timeline and the screenshots, and you have the person themselves saying this, in a workplace where people can sue you, I think that the executives at Bravo made the decision well, let's just get rid of Monica. We'll bring somebody else on because we don't want this type of smoke. You know what I mean? And I think that happened and I'm proud of them because I wouldn't want to say again, say I worked at Target. I wouldn't want to work at and no shade to Target. Shout out to everybody who does, you know, regular smuggler job. Shout out to you. You know, it's all good. Um, I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all. I have respect for everybody. I don't care what you do in this world. Everybody is the same. We're all equal. We all deserve respect. Um, so I don't mean it in that way. I'm just only I'm just only using um, an analogy to so people can get it. Because sometimes we think about these shows and we forget about the real life implications of it. So that's the only reason why I use those um, analogies. You, you see what I'm saying? So 
I I wouldn't if I was working at Target, I wouldn't want to have to work with somebody right next to me every day that I know lied to me about who they were that, you know, um, maybe stole my sixty thousand dollar ring, maybe was a part of the group that stole my pleather, you know, clutch from Mary the store that has, you know, broken into security footage at my friend's house, Jen Shaw and stole her stuff, infiltrated, has an entire media account dedicated to talking about me and bullying me and trashing me. I wouldn't want to go to job to my job every day and have to work with somebody like that. You know, nobody would want to do that. So yes, Tarje, Tarje. Yes, yes, yes. So there's that. There is that. And I think um I also think there's probably Let's talk about why, before we finish the article, let's talk about why I think they broke this news now, because historically, they don't break news about who's coming back to the show until after the entire reunions have aired. Like historically, it's like, oh, the reunion is your chance to save your job. And then once the reunion has aired, then historically, we'll find out who's being asked back, who's going to be a friend of, who's being put on pause you know, blah, blah, blah. The reason why I think they broke this news today is because they want everyone to tune in to the third part of the reunion. It's a ratings grab because now everyone's going to say, wait a minute, they fired Monica. Well, what the hell happened in the third part of the reunion to want them to fire her? It's really smart from a marketing and a strategy standpoint to break the news. Like if they were going to fire her, which obviously they decided to, according to, you know, People Magazine, to fire her. And I hope this is true. People Magazine, please come through. I'm going to be really sad if it turns out this isn't true, but People Magazine is usually on point. Um, This is brilliant from a marketing standpoint and from a strategy standpoint, because people who maybe weren't going to watch are definitely now going to watch. And I think that um, it's a great ratings grab for part three. Because now it's going to be like, well, what the hell happened in part three where Monica got fired, you know? So it, it's a stra- so it's really smart from that perspective why they're dropping the news now, because it wouldn't be as big as a bombshell for a ratings grab if they announce she's fired after all the reunions have already aired. Do you see what I'm saying? Because once it's already aired, they don't have anything new to show until filming and blah, 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 blah. So there is that. So that it's smart from that standpoint. Okay. Now let's keep going. Shannon added, it's a situation we've never been in before. This is a different beast than I think any of us have dealt with. So we're kind of moving our way through it. Remember, Shannon is the um, executive from Shed Media. At least one person has been definitive about Garcia, though. Heather Gay. The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City OG, who is also suing Garcia over an alleged mispayment at her beauty lab and laser med spa and defending herself from Garcia's counterclaims that the procedure was botched and negligently performed, has long been insistent that she will not step in front of a camera with Garcia again. See, that goes back to what I said. I think the women stood together the same way that they did in Bermuda when they all came and they all got in the circle. Wow, what happened to us? You know, all of the four of them. I think the women plus Angie banded together and were like, we're not going to film with this person. We don't feel safe. And remember, this is a workplace. These people are getting paychecks. Okay. (laughs) This is a workplace. NBC University Universal is a corporation. Bravo is a um, subsidiary of NBC Universal. It's basically another department for them. It's just a it's it's a brand that they own. You see what I'm saying? It's 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 business. It's business. And when your employees come to you and say we don't feel safe being at our workplace. Because trust and believe, it's it's a job. They're getting paid. They're going to have to pay taxes on it. It's a job. They have to listen. And just like the article said, Heather was like, I'm not coming back without her. I think if it had just been Heather, maybe, maybe not. But when they all come together, strength in numbers. 
She says, I don't think I ever will ever, she told Variety in November. It's pretty definitive for me. I can speak, I can't speak for my other cast members, but for me, it's pretty clear. Yes. And I think it's pretty clear, especially Lisa Barlow. I think all of them kind of banded together and was just like, get her out. You know, Lisa wasn't having her either. She was like, your time is up. You played all your cards. You're out. Um, and regarding the lawsuits between Heather and Monica, Monica's counter lawsuit was dismissed as it should have been. It was frivolous. It was so stupid. It was all of that. So yay. I mean, I'm excited. I think this was the right move for Bravo and for NBC and for Shed Media. I think it would I think also it would have sent the wrong precedent to people that this is how you get on TV. This is the type of villain that we want. I personally don't want this type of villain on my screen. We can have quote villains. You know, every there's there's archetypes for every single show. There are personas, there are characters for everyone. You know, there's the filler housewife, there's the HBIC, there's the blah blah blah. We can have villains, that's fine. But we don't need real life villains. We need just camera villains. Monica took it way too far. She took it way too far. And I'm also happy she was fired because like I was saying, I think it sets the wrong precedent that people think, oh, this is the blueprint to get on the show. So with everything Monica did, imagine now people thinking, well, I need to start doing burner accounts. I need to start stalking the housewives. I need to start stalking Andy Cohen. I need to start stalking the executives. I need to start stalking casting. I need to start creating drama. I need to start doing fraud. I need to start blah, 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 blah. Because when violence and fraud and lies and deception and very evil and dark, and this is how I personally feel about this woman, is rewarded it sends the message that not only is it okay, but this is the way. So I'm really happy she was fired because I don't want people to think you have to do this type of dirt and deception and lie and fraud in order to get what you want. You don't have to do that. You can get the fame. You can get the money. You can get whatever. You don't have to go to the dark side to get what you want. Because I think people go to the dark because they think that's the only way, but it's not. Because when remember when Monica was on, I was like, oh, she knows the blueprint, the housewife blueprint. And I was like, how sad that the blueprint to being on these shows is committing fraud, being verbally and emotionally abusive, being violent, and lying and deceiving people, and being full of hatred and envy and vitriol. That's the blueprint? It's really sad. It's 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 really sad, but I'm but I am really happy she got fired. I think it sends the correct message. I think it sends the right message and I think that it's a bright day for reality TV. It's a brighter day because there's other ways to get on these shows. Just be yourself. Gina, look at Gina in the OC. On paper, Gina and Monica are the same. But Gina didn't do all this nasty dirt that Monica did. And she's been on the OC for a season after season after season after season. So you don't have to do all this dirt. You can be a person in a nice, normal house. You can be, you cannot have all of the money all the other people have. You know, you can, you can be divorced and raising your children and co-parenting and still be on the show. So Monica, I hope it was worth it. I hope you got whatever it is what that you thought you wanted to get. But you're fired and I'm happy. Bye-bye. So with that, you guys, put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. Are you happy Monica was fired? Or do you think, no, we need to bring her back? I don't think, I think it would have been a complete, it would have been, a, it would have been a horrible to bring her back with the women especially with everything she did. It would have been horrible. That's how I feel. Put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. And are you like me? And are you like, at least they did a, because I always like to look at this stuff from a viewer standpoint, but then I also think, well, if I was an executive, if I was a producer, what would I do? And I think that them breaking the news that she was fired right before part three aired 
brilliant marketing, great strategy, because now everyone's going to be like, what the hell happened in part three? And you know, we will be back to recap part three here tomorrow. So before you do that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. Now, I also wanted to do another story on Monica. And this is the story of 